So I understood the kind of I spoke, the convergence that's naturally happening, and even more so now between technology and telecoms and infrastructure. I suppose the, the best way to, to explain what is what what C Fibre does, we basically have a modern day transport system for digital information, um, and it is like it, it's very like building the railroads in the 1800s. It's the same thing as building the airports in the 60s and the 70s, building the the, the road down to Intel. Um, back in the 1980s, the early 1990s, can be put in the same vein as what we're doing now, which is building the new road for the new industries, which are the content providers, such as Google, Twitter, Facebook, etc. And what we're doing is we're building the road, but out of the country, across the sea, into the UK. Um, and what you need to do and be very cognizant of is that these transport systems, like the traditional ones we know, so you know, old roads, new roads versus you know, you know, four lanes versus eight lanes, we're building a modern day transport system with 72 pairs of fibre, i.e. 72 lanes in that motorway, so that you can get content flowing in and out of the country as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, and with no delays, degradation to signal, or any heat cups in that content been transported. I think they are much more now than, than they would have, say, back in 1999, 2000, albeit that back then, I mean, the government at the time, back in 1999, did, did a, a, a joint investment with Global Crossing to do a subsea infrastructure, and that was to promote the foreign direct investment from the new software and content providers coming into Ireland. I think they're much more cognizant now that telecoms is as important as, as you said, water, roads, transport, etc. Um, it probably hasn't come down as far as the consumer level. Um, probably the next generation of users are seeing it. So when you get the kids now all on their on their um, laptops and they're watching movies, and that's their new fundamental and and um, basic modem for for connecting to TV entertainment, etc. They understand it better. But I definitely think at government level and at agency level, there's a much greater understanding of our need for infrastructure. IDAEI are very supportive of what we have done, um, and the government, particularly Department of Communications, Department of Taoiseach, the same. From a personal perspective, building infrastructure is a, it, it's, it's, a, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme, but what it does do, as you quite rightly point out, is it, it does generate massive investment around it. Um, we're building the networks for three real types of customers. One, the very large service providers. So you will not promote companies such as you know Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc., Instagram, all the new the new wave of companies and the new wave of companies coming down the line that are coming here that we still don't know about. You will not have them coming here unless they can be serviced by the large providers. And the large providers are not so much even the Aircom or the BT. They're looking at the AT&T, the Level 3, the global crossings, the large telecom providers who have global footprints. Most of them have global contracts. And um, they won't come here um, uh, unless the service providers have infrastructure here. The second group of customers are the mobile operators. You've got Vodafone, you've got Telefonica, etc. They're now you know, taking a lot of the content from the fixed line providers um, into the, the mobile through smartphones, etc. They need infrastructure. And then you've got the third and which are the end customers, the large content providers such as Microsoft, Google, etc. that I've mentioned before. Um, for them, the infrastructure is absolutely critical. Um, and without somebody making the investment to build this subsea telecoms network, um, then really they're, they're, they themselves will not make investment in the country in relation to jobs, building out the fibre networks within the city. Because subsea network investment is quite a specialised area and quite a costly one to do. Um, but once they're all there, they will then service the Google, the Microsofts, etc., who are all here. Because I was involved in the technology and Centelco back in 1999, 2000, so I've seen sort of the, 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 the peaks and troughs like, like you have in this. Um, and what, what was very funny is that you saw everybody did computer science in 98, 99, because there was lots of money to be made on it. Um, then in you know, 2001, 2002, when you had the, the bust and the whole thing, everybody stopped in computer science and they went back to doing law and all the traditional, you know, worthy but you know, traditional types of, of, of um, degrees. 
Then suddenly, you had a whole wave of people from 2005 onwards doing property development, quantity surveying, and there's a real thing in Ireland which I haven't experienced um, outside of that uh, uh, in any other country, whereby people tend to do the jobs where are to do educate themselves where they see the money coming from. So now what we're seeing, when you have all the, the uh, announcements in relation to the Instagrams and you have the young guys like the Coder Dojo guys, um, you know, Jamie Benn doing some, some great stuff, you've got Data Hug making a, a, some significant investments out of Silicon Valley, etc. Now they're bringing kind of a sexiness again to computers, so now people are going back and they're doing computer science, etc. But I think our entire psychology has to change, you just got to do it because you just want to do it or because you have an interest in doing it be it art or, you know, because you get into design, etc., rather than having, I think, that old Irish mentality is that you do it because it's going to give you a great job. And until we lose that, I think we're still not going to make that massive transition from being a, a truly digital economy. I mean, we talked about, you know, I've spent some time down in Palo Alto, etc., and I've spent some time in Singapore. Singapore is a very sort of staid corporate thing whereby you get educated and you, you, you study. They tend to have a lot of money and finance, and they don't have a huge creative industry. You look then at, at Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, and it's all guys who, who are, you know, gaming and, and doing uh, coding, etc., because they think it's really, really cool and it's the thing they want to do. And I think Ireland has the opportunity to sort of marry those two together. Because we're a small country, we can sort of manage our economy. We've got great fundamentals with all the, the tech industry we have here already. We're now attracting the next wave of tech companies in here. So we have an opportunity to change the psyche. I think positive press around you know stuff that we're you know like like silicon public such a positive press around it and a lot more positive announcements will i think help change our, our our psyche and create a more innovative culture and just allow kind of you know the next generation of kids etc to just do what they want to do and what they're good at it's a tough one because i, I think i remember seeing uh, lord stephen carter speak at an event one time and he said maybe we just need to realize that you just cannot deliver broadband to everybody and maybe you just need to say let's just give a basic service and some people it, it kind of creates the sort of different tiers of of citizens as such in such a way i worked on a couple of projects i remember working on a project with um, liverpool city council one time um, and what they were doing was e enabling all of their their um uh, services within the, the city council. So you would apply for your social welfare online. Of course, there was a huge poverty problem back there, back in the early 2000s, and they were trying to get PCs down to all the kids. Um, and I know that had you know, a lot of positive spin-offs um, and got people into using technology a lot better. So I think some of the initiative and the push has to come from government. Um, and I mean that both from government using it for doing things like cloud computing and being able to do everything in relation to interacting and engaging with government by doing that online. Then in relation to supporting and facilitating infrastructure build. But maybe there is a realisation that we just can't deliver broadband to everybody. However, that's not a get out clause for the places where we should be delivering broadband. We still have massive issues with connectivity and backhaul from places such as Dublin to Cork. You know, we have a small amount of, of fibre and, and, and we have managed services across it. It's incredibly expensive. And it's stopping, I think, the country from becoming a truly digital country. The amount of sort of investors and, and companies that I speak to, US-based, for example, or UK-based, who would love to come into Ireland, they don't want to be in Dublin. They might want to be in Galway, they might want to be in Kerry, etc. They can't move there. And they can't move their, their, their businesses there because they just don't have access to very basic services. And um, so by saying that, you know, just because we can't deliver, you know, a 10 megs of broadband down to Baltimore, you know, or, or Clonakilty doesn't let us off that we should be providing far better services in the places where we can connect to. It starts, first of all, with the, the, the teachers. Um, I mean... You know, I would be big supporters of teachers and, and a big supporter of, of our education system to a large degree. And I think it's, it's hugely important that we continue to invest in our education system and certainly not pull back from that because we're still a very, I think, immature economy in a lot of times. We've come from kind of, you know, a lot of poverty in Ireland. We've kind of got this new industry. We had pharma, then we have, we have tech, and then that kind of disappeared. So we're still a very evolving and, and maturing economy. Um, so investment in our education is hugely important. Um, and but what happens is that the teachers still tend to come from you know having done arts in UCC, CD, whatever, and still have studied English and history and geography, etc. A lot of them will have little or no computer skills, 
Um, so then what happens is that when they're actually interacting with kids, they don't have, um, th they don't kind of even engage with them on the same level in relation to what they're doing with Facebook and what they're doing with their phones, etc. So I think it starts with all teachers. It should be mandatory that they have a certain level of skills. And you're not talking about the ECDL or something like that. You're talking about something that is very practical and, and, and of use for them communicating. And they should communicate through technology. The other thing is that they're just, I, as far as I can see, many schools just don't have the, um, the equipment in-house. And if you don't have the tools and the equipment, how are kids going to get to use them? Um, and then it's down to things like the broadband connections. What I did think was a very good initiative is what the um, Department of Education and comms have done in relation to bringing a broadband to the schools. And I think HEA Net do a very good job here. They're always a little bit ahead of the curve. When you speak to other you know, colleges and, and, and even uh, institutions that are running broadband in schools, they are a little bit ahead of the curve. I know the guys and I know they're always looking out to see what's coming, coming down the line. Um, so I think it has to start teachers and all the way down. Because um, I think you know, it's, it, it should be just part of our DNA now. I mean, using a computer and getting onto Facebook, should be like switching on the TV or switching on the radio. It's not that different to what happened in the 1960s, the 1970s. Um, and it's like overcome that fear of things. Um, but I think you know, a lot of them are overcome by fear by getting onto Facebook or looking at the pictures on Instagram. So we're slowly easing into it. Um, I think Coder Dojo again, I think that's just an incredible initiative. That thing of just getting people to code and letting kids sit down. I mean, to have that everywhere, I think, would just be an incredible, I think, um, demonstration as well to everybody outside of Ireland of where we see our focus and that we look, we're looking at bringing coding and programming into our, into our, our, com our, our culture and our country the same way as we do by speaking English, speaking Chinese or speaking Japanese, whatever it is we need to do for the next day.